Hey folks, this is Johnny. Welcome to another home studio trainer show. And today we're going to take a look at a great question that was asked in the main personas group, how to export a MIDI file. All right, you might think this is easy that there's an export feature and you can just go ahead and point it to the desktop. There's actually a little bit of an easier way to do this. And we're going to explore two different types of MIDI files that Studio One uses. Uh, before we get started, I would love it if you would like this video, subscribe to my channel, enable notifications, and if you would really like to help support the channel, you got a couple of ways to do that. First way is to become a member here on YouTube, just a couple bucks a month, that would be great, or you can follow the links in the description and actually use the Patreon option down below. So, very cool. All right, so uh, one of the things uh, that I want to actually really make clear is that there's two types of MIDI files for Studio One. Not sure about other DAWs, but we're going to explore both of these. One is called a music loop file. And what that does is that embeds the actual plugin that you created the MIDI file with if you're a Studio One user or if you and the person you're sharing with both have the same third party plugin. All right, then there's the regular MIDI file. You just drag that in, then you assign it an instrument, and everything should go as planned. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the classroom. And let's take a look here. You can see I've left a little bit of space on my desktop so that you can actually see me open the files. Uh, so let's see, I think I can do this one. There we go. How you doing? <laughs> All right. So now uh, if we go here, we can actually go to our instrument. We're gonna use presence as an example. So we got presence. We're gonna use our classic FM. I'm gonna drag this right in. And I'm going to arm the channel. There we go. So now I can play that. I'm going to be using my Atom to do this. So now the cool thing about this, here's a little tip for you guys. If you are using an Atom and you really want some sustain options, you can use the sustain pedal uh, for your keyboard if you have one plugged in that has a sustain pedal option. You don't have to move wires around or assign anything. If you actually go to the input options, if you're using all inputs, then anything that your controllers possess, like sustain pedals, modulation wheels, pitch bend, will all control any of the other controllers that you're actually creating the track with. So for instance, this is really important. I've get, gotten this question a lot, too. So if I just play the Atom... That sounds terrible. So if I press the sustain pedal for the PS49, since I'm using the All Inputs option, I can use that sustain pedal for the Atom. Just like that. So it makes it really simple to actually be able to combine the different options on your controllers. I can even do the pitch bend. Pull the uh, keyboard out a little bit. All right, so. <laughs> so you can see how nice that feature is if you have multiple controllers. All right, so back to the subject at hand, exporting a MIDI file. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I am going to arm the track. It's already armed. I'm going to click record. Very cool. So now if we stop, if you look closely at the file, you can see all of the data in here. Here is the sustain. And when I press the pedal, going all the way over to the end, where you should be able to see where I hit the pitch bend. There it is right there. So you can see that all of the MIDI information is where it needs to be. Let's go ahead and play it. All right, beautiful. So now, what do you what do you want to what do you want to do uh, with your MIDI file? Are you sending to somebody that has Studio One, and maybe you're using the native uh, the native Studio One instruments, not native instruments, the native Studio One instruments, or are you using third party? 
Or do you just want to send the MIDI information or do you want to link it to an instrument? So in order to do the music loop file, you do this. Let's go ahead and I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to go all the way over here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose files. This is really important. So in order to really make this work, you have to go to files so that you can drag. You see that I've, I've actually been doing this here for a little bit. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you go to files and you go to your desktop or you can go to any folder you want. I like to use a desktop at first because I like to see the files show up. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the MIDI file and I'm going to drag it to a place on the desktop. And there we go. So now, now that stupid plus sign really annoys me. But right now, you can see that the music, or you can't see, but it is. You can see that the music loop option is checked. If I hit the shift key, you can see that now the MIDI file is checked. So let's start with the music loop. If I just go ahead and I hit shift again, and I export a music loop right here. Boom. There we go. You can see the file shows up here. This is really great because what this gives you the ability to do, if you send it to another Studio One user and they drag it into your song or their song, it not only puts the MIDI track in, but it also opens the instrument you created it with. <laughs> Yeah, it's always a good idea to kind of adjust the volume a little bit once they import it because it's going to reset. Let's see if I can get this going right here. Global. Okay, so this is nice if you're dealing with another Studio One user. It works really, really well. So now let's say you're not. Let's say you're actually working with uh, somebody using either Pro Tools or Cubase, and you just want to export the MIDI file. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna go to the top and I'm gonna go all the way to the edge. And I'm going to take down just a little bit. I'm going to take the, uh, the event. I'm going to drag it in here, but this time I'm just gonna hit the shift key. I'm gonna choose MIDI file. See how that works. And once I do that, there we go. Now we have a basic standard MIDI file. So what does this do for us? So if I go ahead and I remove the track and instrument and I start fresh, I can take the MIDI file and drag it into my song, no problem. Now remember, also, you know, I didn't point this out before, the tempo that you have chosen is going to be embedded in the MIDI file. So make sure that if you're going to be sending it to someone, make sure that they actually have the tempo on their song set to the tempo uh, that you recorded this file at, because then they'll be able to change it later. All right, so let's see if this worked. And it didn't. Why didn't it? Because this is a regular MIDI file. This is not linked up to an instrument yet. So what's the solution? I'm going to go to instruments and I'm going to go to the same sound that I chose to create it. I'm going to drag it right on top. And if I did this right, I should have a sound. Perfect. So you have two options here. If you're working with a Studio One person, you can do the classic, uh, the classic. <laughs> you can do the uh, MIDI loop or the music loop. And if you're using the uh, native Studio One instruments, it will open up that. Or if you both share the same uh, third party plugin, it should open up that. But if it doesn't, I've never actually tried it, but I'm told it should work. So if it doesn't work, you just actually go to your third party plugin, you drag it on top and everything should be uh, good because you can see all of the different MIDI information. Uh, that you created in your file has been moved. Here's the sustain pedal data all the way to the uh, pitch bend that I did at the end there. So now you can't just drag it to the desktop. I've tried that and it creates this crazy untitled clipping. For those of you on a PC, go ahead and give it a try. That might work. 
But I do believe that the only way to truly do this right is to use the browser, go to your files, go to wherever the location that you want to place it. And I just use the desktop because you guys could see it actually plays there and drop it right there. After you've chosen with the shift key, whether you want a music loop or whether you want a standard MIDI file. And that should be it. I think I've given you a lot of options here in this video. If you guys could, I would really appreciate it if you would uh, comment uh, in the comments area. And while you're down there, if you could, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, become a member if you like. Or you can go to Patreon, I'm going to try them out here, uh, or you can go to Patreon and support me that way. There's 34 members over there right now, and uh, it is really a great place that I can post stuff that doesn't violate uh, uh, YouTube's uh, policies. I can post stuff from the Beatles and stuff like that because it's private. So I hope that you guys uh, got something out of this. Please leave comments. Let me know what you think. If you, if you know of another option that maybe I'm missing here, Leave a comment about that too, and I will see you all in the next video.